His first one-man show was not a success. Discouraged, he began to paint less and started to gamble. In 36, he offered some of his works to the International Surreal Exhibition. They were rejected under the grounds of being not sufficiently surreal. In the early 40s, Bacon burnt nearly all of his earlier works. In April 1945, the art world was shocked by the image which he now regards to be his first serious work, three studies for figures at the base of the crucifixion. In your earlier paintings, you seem to concentrate mostly on the head and mouth. Do you remember painting that in 1949? Yes, I can. Oh. <laughs> and I'd always hoped that I'd be able to make the mouth. syringe in. And I said, well, I needed something to nail it to the bed. <laughs> uh, and I couldn't put a nail in, so I thought a syringe is just as good. 
They said, were you trying to suggest a drug addict? I said, not at all, just to put a syringe in. <laughs> Use heart to the deforming and reforming reality in your paintings. Would this be an example of it? With regard to the body. I think it would. I don't think you've seen a human body quite like that. No. I'd say there was some deformation in that, wouldn't you? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> Modern man wants a sensation with other border of its conveyance. any boredom in that, in the conveyance. Well, you see now, I think that's a, a very beautiful painting. Mm. And of course it does convey this rather lovely, beautiful woman lying on the bed. Yeah. But, I... You see, one's had that. Mm. One's had that. Marvellous things to look back on. Whereas when I do the things, I, I try to make concentrations of, you know, of concentrations of images. Yes. Well, that's a disaster. <laughs> <sighs> we could turn that disaster off, I should think. Why do you think it's a disaster? I just don't. I just think it's... I just don't think it works. Can you tell us why you think it doesn't work? Well, I don't think formally it works. I don't think that the rubbish I've put in the foreground works. I don't think anything about it works. The layout is rather good. But it's just the rest of it I don't like. I wish they just burn it. I wish they just burn idea of doing away with uh, story, with story and representation altogether. You know, like Jackson Pollock. <laughs> I always think 
that abstract painting might at least bring you the most lovely vibrant colors. You know they have got a room in here if you want to be really depressed <laughs> for the rest of the day. You can go into that Rothko room. <laughs> I suppose you could say it's a quality. It's just that I hate that dirty maroon colour he's used in those things. And if I wanted to be depressed, I'd go in for a few hours into that Rothko room to look at maroon <laughs> I could look at a yard of maroon. They could roll out for me. Be just the same. I think they're the most dreary paintings that have ever been made. been here years, about 23 or more, and it's a kind of dump that nobody else would want, but I can work here. These are my very few abstract paintings, because I use the walls to test the colours out. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you like just leaving all this stuff here? Well, I do, yes. I've, I have even tried cleaning it up, clearing it up, oh. but uh, I, I work much better in chaos. Um, I don't think I could work if it was a beautifully tidy studio. It would be impossible for me. Why do you think that is? Chaos for me breeds images. I generally try and work regularly. Because when people talk, about inspiration. I think what is generally called inspiration only comes from regular work. You didn't go to art school, did you? No, thank God. <laughs> I would have been taught all of those techniques which I don't want to know. I mean, you have to find your own technique because if you're trying to do something different and new, rather different and new, techniques that have already been used, you have to find your own. But how do you go about finding your own technique? Trial and error. Or by doing it? Yes, just by doing it. When you come to a canvas, have you any idea what the finished image is going to be? <laughs> yes, I do. 
Um, I have an overall idea of what I'm going to do, uh, but it's in the working that it develops. And um, this is a great problem for me now, as, as I'm a figurative painter. I, um, one can no longer just make illustrations because that's done so much better by the camera and by cinema. Okay. So you have to try and create concentrations of... Not illustration Not illustration thought about it very clearly this morning and wrote it down and uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. It's in my pocket. Can I use it? Of course. Yes, please do. Not illustration of reality but to create images which are a concentration of reality and a shorthand of sensation. things being deeply ordered, don't you? I believe in a deeply ordered chaos yeah. in my work. And how do you achieve that? What do you go through to arrive at that? Well, because the unconscious thing that I'm trying to create, <coughs> I still want that to look deeply ordered. But you, you don't want to be in control of it. That's putting yourself at quite a risk, isn't it? Don't you think you have to? Well, yeah. Don't you think you always have to, as an artist at least? Otherwise, you, you just become an academician. Well, so when you're tracing the oil, or following the oil, as you say, you make one brush stroke, and that takes you one way. Obviously, that's quite dangerous. I mean, what happens if you find it's a way you don't find you like at all? Well, that happens quite often, actually. And it just means destroying the canvas. You actually <laughs> destroy the canvas? Yes, I do, generally, yes. You don't clean it or reuse it or anything? No. You see, I... You can't, because I, I use the opposite side of the canvas, the unprimed side of the canvas. Right. And, um, well, you can't clean that. It just soaks right into, into the texture of the canvas. Okay, so why do you use, as it were, the wrong side of the canvas? I use the wrong side of the canvas, the unprimed side of the canvas, because I found that it works very, very much better for me. It was just by chance that I... I didn't have any money left to, uh, to buy a new canvas with and started painting on the reverse of existing paintings. If you've ever painted a wall or seen someone paint a wall, you'll know that that first mark, that brush stroke, the first mark, has a wonderful vitality about it, which when the overall thing is created, it's lost. So you want that first mark, sorry, um... you want every mark to be that first mark, as it were. Now, what you like to do, I believe, is to let your subconscious take over his own right. Yes. <laughs> um, I have an overall idea, as I said, of what I want to do, uh, but as I'm always hoping that chance will work in my favour, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't read my work. I don't know what it means. I know what it means to me formally. So you're resisting telling a story then? Well, that is, you're not telling a story. Very much so. I, I don't want to tell a story. I have no story to tell. I want the starkness of the image. I want it to give you a shock. Now, shock, you may say, is some form of expression. Which expression, I don't know. but. It's a visual shock I'm after, not one that you would get from telling a story. 
I just want a visual shock. So what is it that you're presenting when you've finished? Nothing. Oh. Uh, except what people want to read into it. Nothing. I'm not a creative. I'm just one of those people who's received a lot of luck and a lot of chance because I just... Why is chance more important than conscious intellect, than a conscious intelligence? Because I make paintings that conscious intelligence would never make. Now there's a painting called Painting 1946, which sort of symbolises, I suppose, what you become known for, and it's a painting of dead flesh of meat. In that particular painting, I tried to paint a bird falling into the of marks I'd made on the canvas suddenly suggested this painting. started to evolve, and evolve very, very quickly. It was one of the most <coughs> unconscious paintings I've ever done. And, and why the meat? I mean, what attracted you to that? I used to think how from the walls, how amazing their colour was, how beautiful
Well, you said they're beautiful. I mean, a lot of people looking at your paintings will consider them as images of horror and blood and dread and images of shock. Well, and not beautiful at all. What, what could I do that can compete with what goes on every single day? If you read a newspaper, if you look at the television, if you know what's going on in that world, what, what can I do that compares with that? Except that I want to make images of realism. So when we're looking at your paintings, we're looking at the real world? Yes, I believe you are. Oh. <laughs> After all... sensation, what we feel, what happens, what happens, what happens at the moment, what happens at the moment. Uh, <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think there's anything exists apart from the moment? No. <laughs> no. I don't. I, I believe you're born and you die and that's it. Nothing else. Well, what do you do about it? I don't do anything about it. Well, just paint it. I just, I just drift. No, Francis. Francis, <laughs> you try to paint it. I try to paint it, yes. But you talk about my own life. My own life. It's just a drifting life, going from bar to bar and drinking and that sort of thing. My impulse is my life. Mm. My impulse is that I'm a, a very optimistic person. I'm optimistic about nothing. Well, how can you be optimistic about nothing? I can be. Well, why? Just existing. Just existing for the moment makes me optimistic. Well, optimistic about what? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just optimistic. I just have that kind of nature. <coughs> Why are you interested in the mouth in your painting? I love the mouth. The mouth is rather like... The mouth is rather like a turner. All the beautiful colours and the lovely vibrations between the, t the, the lips and the teeth and the tongue and all those things. But Francis, most of your mouths are black. I've never been able to make a really successful mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me about the history of painting flesh, Francis? <clears throat> Perhaps. One of the greatest painters of female flesh was Ang. I think he made some of the most
some of the greatest in a curious way the most sexual bodies that have been made No man who did love women's flesh would be able to have painted a subject as beautiful as the do you find the same when you paint? I have um, different attitudes to life to you, of course, but uh, my attitudes are different. Would you like to talk about that? <laughs> well, uh, yes, we can talk about that. Well then, what attitudes do you have? I like men. Male, men, of course. Mm. Male flesh is very interesting. It's always attracted me. Would you like to tell me what attracts you about men? <laughs> <laughs> I just like You're obviously a lot like Michelangelo's men. I think the greatest thing he ever did were the drawings. Mm. I think they're the greatest drawings that exist. Now you said, <coughs> I've, I've read that you've said, that he gave the most expansive... No, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You use better words than that. You said that he gave... He gave the most... I'll tell you what I said. I think he gave the greatest male voluptuousness. 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 That's the word. That's the word. That's right. That's the word to the male body than any other man has ever done. That's amazing. That's amazing.
Christmas. Christmas. I actually want to live oh, in a state of rapturous. I actually want to live oh, in a state rapturous. of rapturous. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How right you are. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is. Whatever it is. And everything else is... And like, everything else is a falling away. <laughs> everything else is a falling, falling away. You don't believe in fantasy, do you? No. no not in the, the least. <laughs> neither do I, not in the slightest. I'm not interested in philosoph uh, fantasy. <laughs> I'm interested in reality. Well, what is reality? Reality is what exists. Are you real? To me, you're real. There you are. There you are. Melvin Bragg. You Flesh and blood before me. How are you going to remake that? How are you going to remake that in another art? Why would you want to? That's the interesting question. Why do you want to? Why do you want? I, I want to because you may say, oh, why should you? But I want to remake in another medium an image of the reality that excites me. <laughs> Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> why would you want to do that, Francis? Because I like doing it. Because I, I happen to be a painter, that's all. <laughs>